our Wednesday, June 5th, 2024 traffic docket. First is uh, Richard Kyle Baker. Is Mr. Baker here? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Baker, if you could find a place to stay stationary. Everyone have a pencil and paper ready when I call your name. You'll have things to write down. Don't be wearing hats. Don't be in moving automobiles, even if you're just the passenger. Don't smoke. Don't vape. Behave as you would if you were in the actual courtroom with me, because you are each in a court of law at this time. Mr. Baker, you have driving while suspended after a prior conviction. Uh, on January 8th of 2024, you were ordered to serve five days in jail. I allowed you to break that up in weekends. Have you served any of that five days? Yeah, I've served four of the five days. So wow. on my last one, oh, go ahead. Did you serve them in, on the days I ordered you to? Yes, ma'am. All, all, all four, but the, the last day. And why didn't you serve the last one? Well, I um, I had something come up. I tried to reach out to the court to see if I could get that the date changed, but it had already gone through. And so I, when, once I found out I had was issued a warrant or whatever, then I went and turned myself in. So now I'm here. You, you also had uh, been ordered to make payments or to pay in a certain amount. Did you do that? Um, I know I have not. I've honestly just completely forgotten about the payment part. I can, I can get that taken care of though. Um, I just, I just missed the day and missed, missed my last day and I would have all this wrapped up. All right. Well, Mr. Regeer, it sounds like he has significantly violated his probation. Are there any motions on file at this time to revoke that probation? <clears throat> Your Honor, the state's understanding is that a um, there's not presently a warrant to show cause pr before the court. I am looking at the journal entry of misdemeanor conviction and sentencing from uh, January 8th, 2024 hearing. Um, I believe it does make certain orders concerning a uh, five-day sanction as required by statute. Subsequently, I am showing a journal entry of sentence modification. It looks like that was filed with the court in February. Um, signed by both your honor and um, prepared by my colleague, Mr. Canfield, it would appear that there is another piece of correspondence from some kind, seemingly from the defendant in this matter. Um, so I think the at this point, the state would be requesting clarification as to how the court wishes to proceed on the issue of... If I, may I say something? No, you cannot I, interrupt. Sir, you cannot it. interrupt. Okay, ahead, sorry. Your Honor, the um, journal entry of misdemeanor conviction and sentencing would further appear to indicate, um, quote, the balance of this case shall be paid in full within 60 days. And again, that was from a January 8th, 2024 hearing by the terms of the journal entry. Um, so I think with all that being said, um, the state would be requesting clarification as to um, how the court would proceed in these matters. Well, here's the deal, Mr. Baker. I let you pick when you could pay, and you told me you could pay in 60 days. I let you pick your jail time days. I let you split the five days up on weekends. I let you pick the weekends, and then you didn't come through for me or for the state. If you're I, on probation, I, you do what you're told, or you get your probation revoked, and you start <clears throat> jail time. Do you understand that's the way the process works yes ma'am i completely understand and like i said i did four of the five days and i'm not even in there i'm in arkansas i'm in a completely different state so i've made and everything if i needed it changed i like i said i tried to reach out to the courts to get it get that date changed to well, make it i know that's not hard to do sir all right what do you right. propose mr baker that i do short of putting you sending the sheriff to put you in jail what do you propose I mean, letting me make up the last day that I do and, and then getting my those fines paid for, and I would be completely done. Okay, so just kind of 
overlooked the I'm, fact that you've disregarded. Um, I'm going to set this over one week, and you have to be here in the courthouse one week from today. Okay. And then we're going to decide what to do about your violating the court's orders. Okay. Whether to revoke your probation and have you serve the full sentence. Whether to find you in contempt. So, all right, you may go at this time. Your Honor. Thank you. Just a moment, Mr. Regeer. Your Honor, if the um, court is setting this matter over one week and um, and is entering certain orders to that effect, I'm not sure if the court wishes to address any issues concerning the um, counsel in this matter. In reviewing the misdemeanor journal entry from the January 8th hearing, it would appear that the defendant did appear pro se, quote, after knowingly and voluntarily waiving counsel and record. I'm going to order that Darren Patterson be appointed, and I'm going to set this on a Monday rather than a Wednesday. All right, this is continued to July 1st, and I'm going to make that a warrant to show cause why your probation should not be revoked. I'm appointing Darren Patterson. Do you want to write down his phone number? Uh, yes, ma'am. It is 316-322-4153. But Mr. Baker, I don't think you understand that you don't just pick and choose. I let you do that a little bit, and I think you've just decided that's the way the system works. So maybe you and Mr. Patterson need to talk about that a little bit. Okay. Nothing further. We're in recess at this time. Is this at 9, a or 9 a.m. as well? You be here at 9 a.m., you be here in person, in the All courthouse. Right. And I don't want to hear about I'm out of state. All right, you may go. We'll be in recess. You're welcome. We'll be on the record in 23TR564, State of Kansas versus Richard Baker. Mr. Baker, are you not going to have an attorney represent you? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, last time I was on here, I had uh, I came across some unexpected funeral expenses for my mother who had passed away. You told me to go ahead and apply for a diversion, which I did, and or I called, spoke to some young woman, uh, and she told me that I wasn't I I wouldn't be accepted or I wouldn't just for some past things that happened several years ago, like eight years ago. I guess I didn't always make the greatest decisions. So. All right, so you applied for diversion, you were denied. So. How do you want to proceed um, at this moment? So on the failure to the register the vehicle, I sent in because so, so it was my sister's vehicle. Um, and we're, we're we're from Arkansas, so my sister's vehicle that I was driving it didn't have it didn't have registration. But I sent she got it registered and I sent in registration. But since this ticket was like over a year ago, that registration has since expired again. But I did send them proof that after the ticket, it did. It was registered um, then. And at that moment in time, my license was suspended. Um, I had since gotten my tickets paid off, and I'm waiting for my um, uh, reinstatement letter from Arkansas so I can go and get that done. And that's the only charge he has, Mr. Regeer, is the registration? Uh, the driving on suspended. Okay. One, one moment, Your Honor. Your Honor, um, pursuant to the information filed in this case back in um, February, um, I'm showing that this case um, involves two counts. Um, count one, driving while suspended, a class A non-person misdemeanor. Count two, expired tag of registration, an unclassified non-person misdemeanor. I do not normally do this, but in this particular instance, um, if the defendant is prepared to plead to count one as charged, the state would be prepared to dismiss count two at this time. Thank you, Mr. Regeer. Mr. Baker, do you understand that he just made you an offer? If you plead to driving while suspended, he'll dismiss the registration? Yes, ma'am. And is that something you want to do? Yes, ma'am. I, I just I'd rather just get this behind me. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you want to hire or apply for a court appointed attorney and deal with this no. later? Or do you want to waive your right to an attorney and proceed today? Uh just waive my right to an attorney. I wouldn't, I would qualify for um to get a to get an attorney. You would not qualify for court? No, ma'am. Okay. Then at this time, I will have the record 
reflect both in the docket notes and the journal entry that you are waiving your right to counsel on record. And how do you want to plead to driving while suspended in count one? Uh, guilty. You wish to admit that in February of 2023, you were driving in Butler County and that your license was suspended at the time? I, I believe it was October of 22, I think. All right. Yes, well, let's go back. Mr. Regeer, what did your record <laughs> show? I am showing that a stop occurred on December 3rd, 2022 at okay. approximately 310 in the afternoon. Um, it refers to an, a location of near Southwest Indianola Road and over Butler County, Kansas. All right. Does that sound more consistent what you remember, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. Okay. And is anyone making you enter this plea today by any kind of threats or promises? Uh, no, ma'am. And you understand you're giving up your right to a trial as well as your right to appeal conviction with this plea today? Yes, ma'am. Then I will accept your plea of guilty and find you guilty of count one, driving while suspended. I will dismiss count two. And recommendations for sentencing, Mr. Regeer. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, on the sole count um, remaining before the court, the state would recommend a $100 fine, $108 court costs. Um, I believe there is the statutory um, five days in jail. State would further recommend 120 days underlying sentence and 12 months of non-reporting probation. So that you're recommending 120 days suspended controlling? Yes, Your Honor. And probation, you said what? 12 months non-reporting would be the state's recommendation at this point, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Baker, you don't have to say anything about your sentence, but since you're not representing, or since you don't have counsel, I'd give you the chance to make any recommendations you wanted. Um, no, I, no, ma'am. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Like I said, you don't have to, but your fine will be $100 and your court costs will be 108 for a total due of 208 your controlling sentence is 120 days. That will be suspended, though, where you will not have to serve it, provided you are successful on a 12-month non-reporting probation. So for 12 months, if you don't want to serve your sentence, you have two things you have to do. One, do not violate any laws for 12 months. And two, get this 208 paid. Can you pay that in 60 days? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'll have that paid care. All right. If you don't have it paid in 60 days, it will be a violation of your probation. Your probation could be revoked and you could be ordered to serve your sentence. Um, it could also be that the amount owed would be turned over to a collection agent and they would act, add a collection fee and they could garnish your paycheck and your bank account. So make sure you get that paid in uh, within 60 days. All right. If nothing further, we... Your Honor. Yes, uh, yes Deputy. Did I hear you say something about a jail time? Uh, jail time is 120 days suspended. Okay. Or four months. Yeah, Mr. Regan? No, five uh, days. That was, that was um, what I was in reference to, Your Honor. I'm pursuant to um, KSA 8260 Sue, subsection A3. Um, um, the... It uh, provides that a defendant, quote, shall be sentenced to at least five days of confinement and upon a second conviction should not be eligible for parole until completion of five days of confinement. And um, count one is was charged as a class A. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. All right. Bad news. You live in Arkansas? Uh, yes. Well, so when you entered your plea, were you admitting that you had a prior conviction for driving while suspended? I did, but again, it was like eight years ago, so okay. I didn't know. Yeah, yes, ma'am. All right. Well, Kansas law requires on a second offense, which I will now find that you are guilty of, and same sentence, except you have to serve five days in jail, or uh, we sometimes do 10 days house arrest, but the house arrest would require you to connect with someone there in Arkansas that would put an ankle bracelet on you and make you stay either at home or at, or you'd have to be at work. So let me ask you this, because I'm back and forth between Arkansas uh, 
and can and, and Derby. We have properties in Derby, and I work obviously back and forth in between both. If I could, I five days. Can I do like three days? <laughs> if I had to do that, or no, can I no, like you, break no, it up at all? Now, what you could do is uh, you could come to Butler County and do. Uh, we we sometimes let's see, Mr. Regeer. It seems like sometimes we let him do two days in jail and and the other three maybe on house arrest. I know that's more common in a in a DUI, but we could do something like that, Mr. Regeer. I would just problem. rather do whatever I needed to do to get this out of me. Like, okay. You know, I'm, um, and if it, if I had to do the jail time, is there any way I could split it up, like on the weekends that I'm in Kansas? Or like, how does that work? Mr. Regeer, would you have any objection to him splitting that up over a couple of weekends? Your Honor, if that is the court's order, I do not believe my office would have any objection to that. All right. Well, it does have to be uh, five days jail if you're going to do jail time. So when do you want to do your first uh, 48? Um, probably, let me, can I, I'm going to look at my calendar real quick. Hold on one second. Okay. So can I start on the weekend of say like the 20, so not next weekend. So it'd be the weekend of the 27th. So the 20, say if I turn myself in on the 20 Friday, the 26th. That'd be fine. Can you do that at 7 PM? And then I would, as long as I'm out before Monday, right? Okay, if you go in on Friday the 26th, you should be able to get out in 48 hours, which would be uh, Sunday the 28th at 7 p.m. Okay, yes, ma'am, I could do that. All right, we'll go with that. So 48 hours starting January 26th at 7 p.m. 48 hours starting February 9th at 7 p.m. And then the last 24, you want to do when? Um, that... So it would be that 23rd, I get 23rd. So I could do go that 23rd, that Friday, get out that, um, that Saturday. Saturday. All right. And then 24 hours starting February 23rd. Now, if you don't do all of those again, violation of probation and you can serve your full sentence. Okay. So is this in, so, it, so once I do these, I'm still, I still on the probation. You are. Okay. All right. Next, I have a Richard Baker. We'll be on the record in 2023, TR564, State of Kansas versus Richard Kyle Baker. Your Honor, Darren Patterson appear on behalf of Richard Baker. Mr. Baker does appear from Courthouse Security One. Your Honor, this is a case where Mr. Baker appears either on a bench warrant or on a warrant to show cause, I'm not certain which, but needless to say, the sole allegation is that uh, previously the court had ordered he serve five days, two 48-hour periods, followed by a 24-hour period, that the allegation is that he failed to appear at the jail for the 24-hour period, and he does not dispute that and does stipulate. I would further, just uh, for the court's uh, information and, and recollection. This is a case where he did um, need to reschedule. He used email to reach out to the court clerk to reschedule. The last time that he did that, the court did authorize the rescheduling of the 24-hour period, but left it to the state. Um, and the state did file the uh, warrant, which he's been arrested on at this point. So um, through all of that, Judge, I would just tell the court, he does acknowledge he has not served that 24 hours, does stipulate to that as being any type of violation and does waive hearing on that issue, Your Honor. Mr. Baker, the court's heard that you want to stipulate that you violated your probation. Is that right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Did you waive any evidentiary hearing in that regard? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I don't need the jail, in other words, to come and testify that you didn't show up. I find that you have violated your probation, knowingly and voluntarily waiving your right to hearing. Recommendations, Mr. Canfield? And Your Honor, I do just want to 
add on a bit to what Mr. Patterson said. There was a warrant that I had issued. The defendant was picked up on that warrant. It was for missing the 24-hour uh, sanction time. I had issued this as an arrest warrant. Mr. Regeer believed it should have been a warrant to show cause. After the defendant was picked up on the arrest warrant, Mr. Regeer did issue that warrant to show cause. So I would just ask that any warrants be withdrawn after today as the recommendation, my understanding is a joint recommendation, that the defendant go immediately to the Butler County Jail to serve the 24-hour sanction. Anything further, Mr. Patterson? Uh, no additional um, statement, Your Honor, would be that uh, um, once Mr. Canfield had filed that warrant, my client became aware of it, turned himself in, and just wanted to get it resolved immediately. So um, he he knows what uh, is going on, that he did fail to appear. So we'd ask the court to adopt the recommendations that he be taken into custody and serve 24 hours immediately. Have you made anything on your case, sir? Um, I was actually getting ready to. I was in the clerk's office going to make a payment right there, and um, they had me wait. So I asked the deputy, and I figured it'd probably be best for me not to miss my name calling because they were having me wait in there. No one was available for me to pay right then. But I had told Mr. Patterson I'm prepared to take care of about 90% of, I think it was like 208. I could pay 175, 150, 175 right now and get it taken care of. And then I could take care of the rest as soon as I'm out. I'll get paid again on Thursday. So, or it'll be Wednesday night. So you were supposed to serve your sanction clear back in February. We modified it so you could serve it later in February. You were to serve five days in jail, 48 hours on January 26th, another 48 beginning February 9th and 24. So how much of that, how much of those three weekends did you report to? I did four of the five days, Your Honor. And Your Honor, Mr. Patterson, I did confirm that with the jail. The defendant has served four total days. But not at the time told to serve them, just kind of hit and miss. Yes, Your Honor. The first time the defendant had missed, I believe, was a 48-hour. It may have been the 24. We, the state, agreed to amending the dates that the defendant would need to report. The defendant then requested a second time to reschedule, which is when I uh, agreed or issued a warrant. I apologize. So are you still working, Mr. Baker? Yes, ma'am. What's your work schedule? Uh, I work Monday through Friday from seven to anywhere from like anywhere from like four to five ish. And and judge, just for the court does know, he does live in Arkansas. He was driving in for those weekends um, so that uh, it, it's a matter that whatever time the court has him serve, he, he'll be doing it without working. To get your personal issues fixed up, are they are they better, Mr. Baker? Uh, they're as good as they can be, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. I wouldn't say they're fixed, but they're as good as they can be. Well, Mr. Baker, when you're given a probation condition, you're to do it. And we have just made lots of concessions for you. Uh, you've just kind of been doing what you want, when you want, and that's not the way probation works. You should have known that because you had a prior driving while suspended charge and conviction. Do you have your license reinstated yet? Um, no, ma'am. I'm suspended for another, I think, six months, I believe, and then I can after that. So how'd you, oh, drive, into court? How'd you drive into court today if your license isn't fixed? I was dropped off. Who's going to pick you back up? My sister, she lives here in uh, in Augusta. So did she drive clear to Arkansas and get you? Um, no, I flew in and then she picked me up. When, when do you go back to work again? I go back to work on Wednesday and then off Thursday for 4th of July and then Friday. So you don't go back to work until July, to Wednesday? Yeah. I'm gonna order that you be taken into custody immediately that you be taken to the jail 
and that you serve. Do you have plane tickets to go back? Ma'am. When do you go back? Wednesday. Morning. 7.20, I believe. I'm going to order that you get out of jail in order that you serve 72 hours in the county jail. And then that you be put on reporting probation as you seem to need more supervision than what you're able to handle on your own right now. As soon as you get out of jail, you need to report to probation. The officers can give you the information for that. All standard conditions to apply. You're to get this paid off in full, and that'll be the order of the court at this time. Your Honor, will the court authorize phone or video reporting if the probation office will allow that? Certainly. Thank you. All right. In your Honor. Mr. Patterson or Mr. Canfield. The defendant was originally sentenced back in January to a 12 month probation. Will this court services probation be 12 months from the sentencing date? It'll be 12 months from today, but he can ask for early termination if, if probation thinks it appropriate. Thank you, Your Honor. Nothing further. All right. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take a step further. I'm going to order that he gets his license reinstated if at all possible. By that, I mean, unless he's a habitual violator and can't, if he's going to be driving around the country working, he needs to have a valid license. That's the order as well. Hey, you may go, Mr. Baker, but you're in custody. Deputy, make sure he's, he's remanded to the sheriff. 